Good morning, and welcome to Poetry for Breakfast. Today we are reading some poems by Annie N.G. Schmidt. She was a Dutch writer. She was considered the queen of Dutch children's literature and had a delightful blast playing with language and just having fun. And today we are going to read from her collection called A Pond Full of Ink. And we shall begin with a poem called Brian Brink. Hello, Mrs. Hughes. Have you heard the news? Brian Brink from the ice skating rink left the tap running in the sink. It ran for an hour and a quarter. The kitchen was all underwater. Can you imagine the scene? He just had it clean. Tsk, tsk. <gasps> Hello, Mrs. Glossop. Have you heard the gossip? Brian Brink from the ice skating rink left the tap running in the sink. It ran for a day and a half. The house was as full as a bath. Just imagine the mess. Chairs were floating, no less. <gasps> Hello, Mrs. Gray. Have you heard what they say? Brian Brink from the ice skating rink left the tap running in the sink. Six weeks unabated. The whole street was inundated. Just imagine the mess. Cars were floating, no less. <gasps> Hello, Mrs. McAster. Have you heard about the disaster? Brian Brink from the ice skating rink left the tap running in the sink. Five months unabated. The whole town was inundated. Just imagine it. Five. No one survived. Look, is that who I think? Brian Brink? From the ice skating rink? Brian, you're such a careful chap. Why'd you leave the tap running in the sink? Oh, said Brian, not for long. The stories they tell are all wrong. Just a splash, nothing more. Bit of water on the floor. About a cup. Mopped it up. Got it done in a wink, said Brian Brink. With disappointment all around. The ladies soon were homeward bound. That was Brian Brink by A. M. G. Schmidt demonstrating her usual love and appreciation of the ridiculous. And to, next up, we have Isabella Caramella. Isabella Caramella has to wash her baby's hair. Isabella Caramella has a cuddly teddy bear and a cuddly brown gorilla and a green and red checked rabbit, and she's got a crocodile. His name is Crabbit. Isabella Caramella plays so sweetly in the sand. Isabella Caramella with a flower in her hand. But if someone comes to visit, and they happen to be vile, she stops her game and whispers to her crocodile. And her crocodile Crabbit could do with some more lunch, so he eats the nasty people up. Crunch, crunch, munch! Like Mrs. Hudson wrote, who thought the children were a pest, and the lady with the fox fur stole, who was awfully overdressed, and the croc eat Mr. Bowen, who had simply got its goat, down to the nasty last torn pieces of his nasty orange coat. Isabella Caramella, where is Mrs. Hudson wrote? Did you perhaps see Mr. Bowen in his orange tartan coat? Can you tell me why that woman would have left without her shoe? <gasps> Isabella Caramella doesn't have a clue. And she sits there playing sweetly with her green and red checked rabbit. And there beside her in the garden sits the crocodile. Crabbit. Isabella Caramella says that was that and there. Isabella Caramella has to wash her baby's hair. <laughs> that was Isabella Caramella. And finally we have Belinda hated getting clean. Belinda Baranda, from somewhere near Flushing, was not keen on washing and not fond of brushing. She was an inveterate cleanliness hater and always postponed her baths until later. Her bodily odor grew stronger and stronger, and her hair and her nails grew longer and longer. Belinda was filthy a terrible fright. She looked like a pig, a horrible sight. And when her mother finally came home, with soap and shampoo and a brush and a comb, Belinda just started to yell and grrr, as if she was going to drown in the shower. Her mother, by now at the end of her tether, gave in and shouted, Stay dirty forever! But if that's what you want, 
You just walk out that door, and I won't be your mother any more. So that filthy little Belinda Baranda took off up the street and started to wander. The highways and byways all over the land, getting grubby and covered with mud, dirt, and sand, with grimy smudges all over her face. The more she avoided a bathroom or scrubbery, the more she began to resemble some shrubbery. Grass started growing on her shoes and her clothes. It covered one leg, then slowly rose until she was totally, thoroughly hid, and no one could see that she was a kid. And then the roots grew into the ground and fixed her in place like a tree on a mound. Birds came and built little nests on her sleeves, and slowly she grew her own branches and leaves. A nightmare, but true. You can take it from me. Belinda Baranda turned into a tree. So now you know little cleanliness haters end up as trees sooner or later. That last poem was Belinda Hated Getting Clean by Annie M.G. Schmidt. The illustrations in this version are by Sam Postermo. The translation is David Colmer. And the publisher is Erdman's Books for Young Readers. Have a great day, everyone. Take care.